Welcome to Mind Boggles. Hope you enjoyed some of our shows. Uh, this is a show that focuses on how the mind works, basically. Not what you think about, but kind of the technology of thinking. You know, for example, do you think in words, picture, feelings? Uh, how do you create stress? Do you create stress by talking to yourself? Do you create stress by visualizing pictures of the future? Uh, how can you calm the mind? We've talked about the three levels of very natural relaxation, which would be to make yourself physically comfortable, relax your jaw, slow your breathing, and you'll find the mind will begin to slow down because the breath controls the mind. Mind-boggling things like that, right? Today, <clears throat> talking about a true education. You know, we've had all kinds of books written about education, more than we can count, probably. Um, but I like to consider that there's a true education that starts from tradition down to actually useful knowledge that is congruent with reality. So, one way to look at this whole thing is we start with tradition. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're born, what country you're in, you get born into a tradition, a pattern that sometimes from the culture, from the neighborhood, from your parents, whatever, we get tattooed with a tradition. And that's okay, that's kind of beginning, that's where we start our life. Uh, we're kids, what do we know? We're going to believe with the people that are raising us. We wind up taking their religion. We didn't never shop for religion, we just follow into the pattern because it's what my parents did. Eventually you get to be a teenager, <clears throat> or maybe even younger, you start having your own opinions. Well, later on, if you don't give it a lot of thought in terms of your own research, looking at things, you start to kind of harden things into beliefs. You believe certain things based on what you know at this point in time. Well, hopefully those beliefs aren't too rigid, but they're beliefs based on a time period. In my first 15 years, based on what I've experienced, the world looks like such and such. Hopefully by the time you're 18, 19, or 20, you hit a level that says, you know, I know what I've been told, I know what I'm supposed to believe, the opinions I'm supposed to hold, the, the religion I'm supposed to be in, the politics I'm supposed to apply, but who told those guys? I mean, how did they find them to be true themselves? So when you really think about things deeply by the time you're in your late teens, you realize, I really don't know much. Now that's a huge jump for a teenager, but you realize, man, I, I don't know much about life yet. Let me maybe go off to school or go to some sort of uh, school so I can learn more about how the mind works. <clears throat> maybe you go to a couple years of college or maybe all four years, whatever. You start being exposed to uh, libraries of people who've done years of research in certain areas. You have a certain opinion on abortion or a certain opinion on uh, gay marriage or whatever it happens to be, and you have this little rigid view when you're young, later on you realize, man, there's people who spend 10 years of their life doing research on these topics. What have they found? You know, what's the research? What does that show? What data? You think, oh, people should not be allowed to drive. Well, what's the data? You know, how, how do we look at the research? What does it say? So you realize, by the time you're, maybe uh, you got your first bachelor's degree, you realize, God almighty, I don't, I don't know too much at all. There's all these people doing these really fantastic studies out there. And maybe you go to graduate school, start doing some yourself, but the main point is you realize the world is much more complex than you thought. There's thousands upon thousands of people out there doing excellent research, compiling data to show us what's really going on. Right? As opposed to when you're young, you don't really care what's going on, you have your beliefs. Well, I'd like to suggest to you the beliefs are a very cheap form of knowledge. They're, they change with the wind. So I don't give much opinion to beliefs at all. It's like, hey, you re keep on reading, keep on studying, keep on learning until you can maybe find the research that gives you an indication, okay, based on uh, a thousand drivers in Milwaukee, that older drivers tend to be safer than younger drivers. Well, I don't know. But then you have the research that shows you what's real. <clears throat> now you have some useful knowledge based on people's research, and you have someone dipping in to reality to take 
some direct experience. Okay, here's something that's happened and we can say, okay, this is real. This is what the facts show us. Yeah. So a true education <coughs> is really not about learning facts. It's about learning the process of how learning takes place. And the shallow learning is the tradition we're born into. It's not bad, it's not good, it's just where we begin. Education begins with tradition. It doesn't end, it begins there. That's what you get tattooed with. Right? Then over time, if you're really pursuing a good, true education, you start to look deep and deeper and deeper yet into research into what's going on out there. What can we show? What can we prove? As opposed to opinions, which are of very little value. So a true education would be how can I find out the facts regarding a career I want to go into? You don't do it because you think, well, my Uncle Fred did it. Well, you go, you go do the research. You find out what are the variables? What do I need to know? What do I need to do? How do what do I need to learn? Right? Then you have some useful information. If you do things out of tradition, out of opinion, out of belief, it may work out for you, it may not work out for you. But the power is when you can start really taking a deeper and deeper look at things. For example, most people uh, shop more for a car than a religion. You know, we mostly take the religion that our parents have. It's not good or bad, it's just like that's, that's what we do. Uh, uh, sometimes that's useful, maybe sometimes it isn't. Maybe later on you want to re-choose. Tough, isn't it? Because now you've got to go against the grain. Well, part of growing up is when you take a deep look at your background. You say, well, here's pieces that I want to keep. Here's pieces, eh, I'm not so sure about that. Here's some pieces, man, I don't want any part of that. Yeah. So as you grow emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, you will find yourself leaving traditions and opinions and beliefs, hitting the I really don't know level, and then moving into scholarship where you do reading, you do your own research, then you find out that, you know, based on who I really am, this particular philosophy or religion or political view or uh, opinion is more appropriate, it's more like who I am. And that's when we really move into adulthood, really. Uh, and it's hard sometimes, it's just flat hard. Because there's most people in our family, uh, people who knew us, they remember us in a certain way. And as you start growing and changing, people don't like you to change. You know, they really don't. Um, but uh, that's kind of, to me, true growth, true education, is when you start with a tradition and you grow through it, and as you individualize yourself, you keep parts that are useful and congruent, that make sense. You drop things that are of no value to, and you begin to create your own traditions for your family. Okay? But a true education, uh, in general, is where you realize my traditions, beliefs, and opinions are shallow until I think them through. Now, once I think them through, I might say, you know, these, these traditions are absolutely right on the money for me. They're perfect. Fine. But without thinking them through, um, you may be not living a full life like you'd really like to. So, a true education is one where your knowledge of how it is and how the world actually works is congruent. Our beliefs our opinions, our traditions fit the world. Yeah. And right now, for all of us, the world's changing very fast, isn't it? You know, tough to hold on to anything. Things are moving very quickly. A lot of the old rules don't apply anymore. We have to stay flexible. We have to stay open to change. And especially old guys like me, uh, stuff that used to work for me, that doesn't work anymore. I've got to learn new technology new types of uh, IT stuff. It seems like a half my life I seem to be fighting with servers and websites and so forth, which I've never heard of that stuff you know, 30 years ago. So part of it is staying flexible, staying up to speed, 
and learning how to appreciate and adjust and enjoy change. Right? That's the way it is. Traditions tend to be very resistant to change, very resistant to change. Like, like now the, the movements um, in religion, the kind of the more conservative movement, it isn't a religious movement, it's more of a fear like stop the change, <laughs> it's too fierce. Let's go back to the old days because the change is very frightening. Yeah. Well, that's how it is. We're going to keep changing. You might as well jump in and see if we can direct the change in some healthy, creative way so not just Americans can win, but all human beings on the planet can win because we all got to win here. We've all got to learn how to be kind to each other, take care of each other, appreciate our own clear water, the air, the planet. Those things are not negotiable anymore. Those are the things we all share, right? There's no American part of the planet. It's all now a global approach. And that's uh, very distressing for a lot of people because they like to think, well, America is very special and very separate and we've got to take care of ourselves. No. We all are like living in an apartment house now. A true education is realizing the game that we grew up with is over. Yeah. How can I adjust to make my perspectives on the world broader? How can I appreci appreciate all of humanity, not just a special piece, not just my own family or my own high school, but all people, everywhere. We all bleed red, we all sweat, we all want to see our grandkids grow up, we all want a good job that pays us enough to take care of our people. Right? Uh, the commonality of humanity is pervasive. You know. The differences we tend to accentuate to our peril. A uh, true education is learning how can we create peace? Right? How can we create compassion? How can we create caring for each other rather than fighting each other? Right? That is where a true education will really begin to take us a true education, how to help each other. Somebody asked the Dalai Lama one time, in, 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 kind of in, in jokingly, what his religion was. People kind of chuckled. He says, no, no, no. My religion is the practice of kindness. That's not a bad religion. A true education, hopefully, will lead us all to that same conclusion. We need to practice kindness and compassion and wisdom with each other. Anyway, that's my view. Mind boggles. A true education. Hope you can get one. I'm working on one. It doesn't stop. You just got to keep working on it. True education. Uh, meanwhile, take care of yourself today and see if you can find some way to help somebody else today. Anyway, till next time, take care.